Data is knowledge and without knowledge we can't provide the best care and treatments for our patients. If we didn't use data, research would be limited because we wouldn't be able to answer really important questions about the population that we serve within North West London. When we're talking about data here, we're talking about routinely collected healthcare data. When a member of the public become a patient, every interaction is captured as a data point and that is the data we're able to use to answer really important questions about the care delivery. We all have lots of important questions about how to better treat our patients and we can only answer them with large amounts of high quality data from patients. In our study, we wanted to know if a patient had a heart attack and a cardiac arrest at the same time, do they have worse outcomes in the long term compared to patients who just had a heart attack but without a cardiac arrest? The key finding from our study was that patients who have a cardiac arrest at the time of a heart attack have worse long-term outcomes. So this suggests that they should be treated differently from other patients with a heart attack without cardiac arrest the Trust has a data environment. Within that environment we have two types of data. There is eye care, which is Imperial Clinical Analytics Research and Evaluation, which collects very detailed data from multiple systems in the hospital setting, such as blood test results, imaging tests and treatments, for instance, that patients receive. The other type of data that we hold is in WISIC, the Whole Systems Integrated Care data set. It includes hospital data, but importantly, that data is also linked to primary care and GP records, social care data, community care data, mental health data. I totally understand why some patients may have some concerns about consenting to their data being used for research. As a researcher, I would want to reassure them that for our study and for all the studies, that the data are anonymized and there was no way that we could have identified them from our study we would not have been able to answer the question that we posed for our study without data from large numbers of patients and also with a long-term follow-up. So the data that's held within these systems, uh, patients are either directly consent or we also have in North West London a sector-wide data sharing agreement that allows us to use any data captured as part of routine healthcare delivery in a de-identified form for research. Also importantly, the access to that data is very carefully controlled and governed. And most fundamentally, that is when people are requesting access to that data to answer a particular question, that question has to be deemed in the public interest and for public benefit. And we have a very strong panel, including a number of lay partners and members of the public, to help answer that most fundamental question to allow access to the data. I go through the layman summary on the application and how it correlates with the uh, benefits for the public and patient and how the data they are asking for is important for their research. I ask questions around it and once I am fully satisfied that yes, it is something which is a benefit to the public and patient, I give my views and we give a green signal to yes, we can go ahead and give the data. I would like to bring out some uh, very personal story about uh, my sister and um, she suffered from bone cancer and she died at a very young age of 21 and uh, this has changed something uh, in my perspective. What kind of treatment was given to my sister is kind of a data to the researchers. And if this data is useful for helping other patients of cancer, then why not? Why not use data? Like you trust the medical system for your uh, treatment of any disease. You have to trust some of the medical education institutions to do their research and try to improve the medical care because the ultimate benefit is coming to us. The future of data is really exciting. I think over the next five years, we're going to see the data used in a much more intelligent way. And the outputs of analysis derived from the data are actually put back into the clinical systems to really support clinicians uh, making the right decision uh, for our patients and ensuring that the treatments are of the highest quality.